Dan, could you say something about how you and Dick got together? Uh, as adventurous on television as Laugh-In was during its time? I haven't seen anything uh, hey, adventurous hey. on television uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> That was cute. Yeah, that was cute. Dick, could you say something about how you and Dan originally met and got together, and, and also about how, how the show got started? Well, that was a lot longer than 25 years ago for Dan and I. Mm -hmm. Dan and I got together back in the early 50s and played nightclubs for 15 years before we uh, encountered this mad group. Could you say something about how you originally, the two of you originally got together? How did that happen? Uh, we were introduced by a chap that probably isn't known here now named Tommy Noonan. And it was a team, a comedy team called Noonan and Marshall. Right, Peter Marshall. As yeah. Peter Marshall and Tommy Noonan. And uh, he introduced us. And nine days later, we broke an act in at Charlie Foy's Supper Club, which is also burned down, <laughs> as I recall. Uh, I'd like to ask the woman who asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Uh, about the interwoven dialectics of uh, <laughs> life and living. Excuse me, uh, do you have any dental floss? Question for Tiny what? Tim. Go. Do it again. Go Question for Tiny Tim. Yeah. It appears you've still True. got that psychedelic look. Uh, uh -huh. do, do you feel more comfortable these days or in the era of the 60s? Well, that's a good question. And before I answer that, I, since you asked me a question, I want to say one thing right now. No matter what they say, the laughing was important to every one of us. It brought us here today. It brought the career in the, in the TV screens, in the movie screens, for many of these great stars. No one here can really pass it by lightly. It was our step to success, number one. All right. Number two, in, in answer to that question, what was that again? I would like to uh, <laughs> sign for <laughs> Tiny <laughs> Tim. It was about, for those of you who are hard of hearing, <laughs> It was something about dental floss. <laughs> See a drip of We have one here. Goldie. Uh, Goldie. Goldie. Goldie, I remember you won the Oscar while you were on Laugh In. What was the reaction from the rest of the cast? I know there was a real funny bit where you came on with the, the robe and the, the scepter and the crown and all that, but what was the reaction from them off camera? They were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were really jealous. We were furious. Everybody How was How dare she go and get an Oscar? <laughs> and it was, it was... <laughs> It was a role I really could have played, too. <laughs> you were too tall for the part, uh, and we got And we got another one. Could, OK, yes. Um, I would like to ask for an answer to a question that was previously asked, and that is, who would you like to sock it to today? Could, could we really have some answers to that? It's too late for Reagan, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think right now we're kind of in a period of optimism. And I don't know if there's anybody to really want to sock it to now. Somehow I yeah. feel like we're yeah. entering into a new era of hope. Yeah, and it's too negative to think about. Yeah, yeah. it is. Absolutely. I mean, we're, sure. it, it's, it's interesting, you know, but that's really true. <laughs> it's true. What? Lily? My Lily, about you're on. Socking it to someone? Sure. Well, I've always held a more demure stance, so. <laughs> 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 I've, I used to try to heal this group, even. <laughs> yeah. I'm going I'm to try another question that was can asked I, earlier. Can I answer? Here. Yes. Uh, can I answer uh, that question? He didn't uh, one sec. I'd like to talk to my first wife, Miss Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you already did that, Tim. <laughs> did he did. He oh, did, well, too. Talk he about did, it. too, Tim. Don't I? Right, yes, where? Right here. Um, I think it would be interesting to hear from, from uh, as many of you as would like to comment uh, on what the show did mean to your, to your lives. Obviously, it meant a lot, but, but uh, it, I think it would be very interesting to hear that. 
Lily, how about you? What, what did well, uh, Laugh-In was everything for me because I, uh, I was totally unknown when I went to the show and I had, uh, didn't even want to go on television because I, I didn't think I would be good on television and I had some romantic idea about being a stage actress and living on, on the East Village the rest of my life. And, uh, and, and, and the kinds of things I did, I was, I was obsessed with making monologues and stuff and I did that all the time and I'd go to the improv but it never dawned on me to become uh, really famous. I really just wanted to, to do what I did, and uh, I guess I wanted to uh, um, have this uh, live purely. <laughs> and then I met George. <laughs> and I, I went to see George because I'd gone to see people in the past, you know, and I would do certain characters and things. And this was like the early middle 60s, and people would like sort of shrink back in horror and, uh, or move their chair further back from me, you know? And uh, then I went to see George, and in fact, I'd heard so much about him, and I, uh, and I, and I, one thing I regret to, I have two things I regret in my career. One is that I didn't go naked to my interview with George. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I had it in my mind because I'd heard so much about him. He was supposed to be such a wild man, you know. And I was going to go in like in a real demure, you know, cloth coat with a fur collar and, and a kind of, you know, maybe a little, a little cloche with, the, you know, I mean, a little, I mean, a little spring hat with some, <laughs> and a nice handbag, maybe. <laughs> and then I thought I'd, you know, take my coat off and hang it up and sit down with gloves on and everything and then have an interview. <laughs> I think you should do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's, that's great. That, that first negotiation would have been a lot easier. <laughs> what have you got to lose? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got to do Ernestine, and George saw everything I did. George embraced me. He was it's totally expansive, and and I did Ernestine, you know, and all I and I went in the show in the third season, and everybody was famous, and and I was scared to death, and I thought it was like going to a new school, and then they everybody, but they were all famous and happy, and you know, and uh, pulling down big bucks, and uh, <laughs> and they were in a top yeah, five right. show, and it was fabulous. You know, the spirit on the show was just a just wacky and fun and all that silly stuff, and. And I went and I did Ernestine and I didn't even, I didn't go on the air for weeks and weeks and then I finally went on the air and literally I was famous overnight. I mean, Ernestine was famous overnight. And so, yeah. and George warned me, he said, uh, he said, now you're gonna, wait till we air the first time we air, because I had no idea that Ernestine would be so popular. And um, he said, you're gonna, he said, something's gonna happen. Ernestine is really gonna be famous and it's never gonna happen that way again. And um, anyway, it was a great time. But it time. did, Edith Ann. Yeah. Well, not really. Oh, I mean, well, I mean well, Edith Ann was fam popular, but I'm saying that first time you have it, that first, you know, you don't even quite get it. But, uh, but the fun of being on the show, and it was all, we worked like hell, though, I have to tell you that. I mean, Dan and Dick came in about two hours on Wednesday. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yo, right. Yeah, yeah. Yay, yay. I, and we were, and we had to, we had to no, try we never and, held it against them. <laughs> <laughs> we had the wardrobe alone. We had to like try and we'd have racks and racks of clothes from Orbax, you know, and we'd have to. Uh, and it's exhausting to try on those clothes. Oh, it is. Yes. Oh. You had to cling. Your hair's all sticking all over the place. <laughs> and big old oh. turtleneck oh. sweaters. And, and we'd go through each other's racks. We'd run down there, try to steal from. I try to steal from someone else's rack. You know? <laughs> and uh, anyway, that was our whole lives. I mean, we did. We worked, and we had a load of fun, and that's I, all there was to it. I should point out that when we talk about costumes, hundreds of costumes used to come in and out of that building, mm. and some of them we bought and we rented and whatever. But the man who designed all of the clothes the whole time that Laughing was on the air, the news songs, and all of those things is here. Michael Travis. Yeah. Michael. Yeah. And also, also with us is the man who did, who did all of the music and the arrangements and conducted and, and would write things like the titles of the songs that were the background music with Bible Chase and uh, uh, Funky Funk and stuff. And, you know, Ian Bernard. Yay! Ian! Yo! And the man, who, the man who directed this, which is like a lion tamer with all of this stuff going on, uh, is Mark Warren. He's with us too, Mark. Mark. Yeah. 